Hello, my name is Fluffy Papaya, and this is Honeycraft. Since last time, we've gotten a lot of stuff done. I know, it's incredible, we're doing stuff and things. But before we kind of show off what we have got done around here, let's go over a few things on what wasn't caught on camera. Okay, we'll get to this thing in a second. Enemy spotted, enemy spotted. Quick list, nether trip diamonds, netherite, interior. Wow. Let's just kind of chat as I show you what else I've been up to. Which is admittedly a lot. To start off, terraforming. I once said many years ago, months, whatever, uh, that I was useless without an efficiency 5 shovel and pick. But, you know, we made it work with what felt like 50 iron shovels and efficiency 2 pick. Uh, I got my very weak enchant setup. More on that later. We're raising this island over here so you can't reach it from the water. Much later with better tools, I'll come back and terraform under the water. But for now, we've just removed all the sand and gravel and we're placing grass all around the edges while smoothing out the highest part of the island. Really want to create kind of a, a, a good base structure that seems solid and sturdy enough to place the future build on here. And then there's this, where I made a small little circle pavilion. This bit is still in progress, and I'll probably replace the dirt with moss later, add some vegetation to kind of smooth out the, st the sharp fence corners. And in the meantime, I killed some cows for leather and got steak instead. Thanks, Axe. And now I want to talk about what my plans for my base are, now that you guys are able to watch it as it's happening and it's already done on the other side. Um... I think I'm going to make a fun little train station. It was the plan for a base in a modded world that never got finished, uh, mostly because of just, you know, communication errors between different build people and lack of materials, which how the hell do you have a lack of materials in a modded world? I don't even know. Um, but we're definitely going for a very uh, uh, dark, semi-gothic, almost, almost 1800s uh, train station look where we're going to have a lot of deep slate, um, warped wood, you know, the, the, the basics of, of like train station shapes with the arch bridges, the um, triangular ceilings with the windows through the center, bridges connecting different buildings, arches. Uh, yeah, I think that, um, I think that builds like these are they're very much uh, um, something that you never really complete. I feel like uh, I have a sketch right here um, of the train station. It's been here for ages. And I feel like I've been looking at this now for quite literally um, six months. And I've never built more than two buildings from this sketch. I took one of them down eventually as well. It's like... When it comes to big builds, you really got to make sure this is what you want to do, because otherwise you're going to be looking up at something that took you four hours to complete and think, God, do I really want to continue doing this? Because the thing is, small builds don't look bad. Like, there's this whole idea out here that mega builds are, you know, the only way to go. And while that's not necessarily untrue, it definitely devalues the work of, you know, like, people who do interiors, people who do small builds, or people who do terraforming. And I feel like it's very important to pay attention to a lot of the smaller builds, which is definitely why I kind of uh, uh, started small on the train station, you know, the bridge connecting the two sides of the island between my base and now the pathway that leads down into the train station. So I think it's, you know, it's very important to to when connecting big and small, make sure your small doesn't disappear. If your starter base is connected to your mega base, you don't want your starter base to be completely engulfed by it. You want your starter base to be just as vibrant as your mega base. So I feel like it's, yeah, it's definitely um something that I've always thought that a, you need to make sure you want to do this, and b you got to make sure that you don't undercut yourself. I think that's the huge reason why most of my mega projects aren't actually mega faces. They're mega terraforming projects. Mega doesn't even sound like a word anymore. Um, 
But I think that's why, like, a lot of the stuff that I do that uh, people kind of know me for mostly um, is enormous landscaping projects, because that's where you can really feel like it doesn't matter where you end, because you can always continue from where you left off. Um, in a sense, every terraforming project is finished from when you started. Obviously, you can say, all right, yeah, this mountain is finished when there's no holes left in it. But then you got to think about also like smoothing out at the base or adding snow at the top. Um, and it, it make, the thing with terraforming projects is it makes it very easy to determine, yeah, this is where this is where I kind of think it should stop. This is where it does stop. This is where it could stop. So, yeah. Non-base builds are very easy to, you know, never really have a true end to. I say that and then I realize that like most people probably actually haven't seen my terraforming projects, which I also mentioned in the first episode. This is stuff I like to stay up until two in the morning doing because I just get so hooked onto, you know, projects that can both never and already are finished. Let me, let, let, let me show off some, some of my old stuff in different worlds. So these first three photos are kind of like the only big build project I've done where it's something that's man-made that, or at least looks man-made that I've made. Um, it was called the Swamp House. It was my baby project for about two-ish weeks. Um, yeah, these three photos kind of showcase most of the details on it and I'm very proud of this interior especially because this doesn't look like the interior to a big house. On the other hand we have uh, the terraforming I did for the project called the Boneyard. Um, this is something that I spent a lot a lot of time on and my partner is also to thank for the kind of buildings that you see scattered around in these photos. Um, but I'm the one who did the mountains, and I am so absolutely incredibly proud of them. And the reason I bring these uh, old projects up that aren't related to Honeycraft is because I very much want something similar on Honeycraft. I want these uh, big mountains and paths that lead in between them all around this jungle base and train station that I'm building mostly because I want the train station to actually be somewhat underground. Last episode, The Bone List, I mentioned that I want the base to touch world height. The part specifically that I want to touch world height is the mountain that will go over the train station. So that might take a bit, but uh, hey, I've done it before, so might as well try again. Okay, now that this self-gratuitous part is over, let's go. let's go back to Honeycraft and what happened there. So, what else happened over the course of the few days? Um, did some more building, including, uh, did, did the flooring of the little circular terrace. Um, wardwood is so hard to come by, I don't know why. We gathered some ladders, building blocks, and square pickaxes for our lovely server admin, B, who then came by to pick them up, so... We did that, and then I got my level 30 enchantment set up finally all finished and completed, which is now open to any of the other server members who want to come by and use it free of charge. Lab is provided. And now, as we sink into the endless fourth of slog and lag, I would like to say thank you very much for watching this episode of Honeycraft. I very much appreciate it. And until then, you guys know the rules. Be kind. Be safe. Don't die, and if you get superpowers, I want in. See you soon.